Help support Friendo Club by going to patreon.com slash Stephen Larson or clicking join at youtube.com slash Stephen Larson. Access to bonus episodes, question threads for the Going In Raw podcast, and entry to our monthly wrestling predictions challenges. Join the Friendo Club today. Hey, Friendo, Steve here. Yeah, Larson. And welcome back to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you need to be listening to. On today's episode, we're talking about last night's Raw After Mania. Also, we've got more on, oh boy, oh wow, Tony Khan releasing the all-in footage and what he has to say about this coming up tomorrow night on Dynamite. So we're going to get that out of the way, and then we're going to talk about the Raw After Mania, the ups and downs, et and cetera, where things are going, you et know, et cetera. Where things are heading to, because we might have got a major match teased Ooh. in the very long opening segment. But before that, yes, let's talk brawl in footage. Tony Khan speaks about uh, airing said footage uh, with uh, SI's Justin Barrasso. Talks about decision to air the backstage footage from all in London. This is what TK had to say. Quote, AEW has a great track record of delivering on what we advertise. And it is real footage. The Young Bucks will show backstage footage from All In, the most important event in AEW history, the world record holder for most tickets ever sold for any wrestling record. Over 180, sorry, over 81,035 total. It was an important night backstage as well. The decision is based on putting on the best show for AEW as well as driving interest for Dynamite in their Dynasty pay-per-view on April 21st. This is real-life footage that affected many people and will air for the first time on TBS during Dynamite. And then later on in this uh, interview, Khan added that uh, airing this footage will be incorporated into this Young Bucks FTR uh, story uh, leading to their match at Dynasty, saying the following, quote, the Young Bucks are wrestling for the World Tag Team Championship at AEW Dynasty against longtime rivals FTR. The rivalry is one of the most significant ever in AEW, and there is a good reason why the Young Bucks are showing this video. It's important that the Young Bucks explain the reason why this is relevant going into Dynasty. It should be another must-see part of a great show on Dynamite. So in official capacity, I know several outlets have reported either hearing that it's going to be the Punk Jack Perry footage or in terms in, when it comes to Meltzer and Alvarez, they're outright saying it is. Anything officially from AEW is very coy about what the actual footage is. Like yeah. nowhere in this is Tony Khan said we're showing the CM Punk Jack Perry fight footage. Fightful was clear to say that people backstage were led to believe or seem to think it's going to be that. Yeah. Fightful never said it was going to be that. Yeah. Alvarez I mean, and Melser says it is going to be the CM Punk Jack Perry stuff. I mean, we're talking about it. So yes. I guess mission accomplished in One that way or respect. the other. Yes. Is it like the thing it's it's one of those things where i don't know necessarily if you know the the old phrase all press is good press you know um when people are talking about something that seemingly is so controversial that it has them questioning whether or not it's a good idea the words disaster being used and even i'll be honest like the flip side to that, where you have a lot of people defending AEW with the with the line, you know, shouldn't AEW be allowed to defend themselves? I don't know that that's the narrative that you want out there about your fictional narrative that you are trying to weave yeah. on television. Yeah. Um, but it's not my company and it's not my, you know, millions of dollars because I don't have millions of dollars because I forgot to buy the gosh darn Powerball ticket. Oh, did someone and, win? Yeah, man. I think up in, I want to say Reading. Ah. Yeah. So, you know, just at a liquor store, you know, just some schmo went in there. Now they're, well, like a billionaire, a, a, billionaire. a high millionaire. Like, I think they said the cash value is like 600 million. Yeah, been nice. Yeah, yeah. That would have been nice. You yeah, know, I mean, Star Trek cool. theater in my house and a basketball court. I mean, you, you could, me. you could pretty much get an entire replica of, of the enterprise from next generation built. Oh yeah. You could get. The, the deck you can get 10 forward i mean it wouldn't be a working holodeck but you could have a holodeck i could really put some resources into a working holodeck and i can recreate the footage from from all in look uh 48 hours from now 
we're going to be talking about this segment. Yes. And uh, and I don't know, you know, if it's going to, you know, uh, do something that will drastically increase their ratings. Certainly, if it does, it'll be a short term bump and then it's yeah. going to be back to, to square one. Um, and you just got to hope that the focus is going to be on long term storytelling and promoting new young talent and uh, pushing the fact that they got a couple of really major, awesome free agent signings. Mm -hmm. And this is something to, you know, like he says, advance some stories heading to the next pay-per-view. Um, if he's able to accomplish those things without coming off as petty or uh, simply trying to humiliate a former employee, mm -hmm. then that's not going to be good. But if he's able to accomplish some story momentum, then mission accomplished and we'll sit there and, and I can't, I get the feeling it's going to be more along those lines than the other line, but the entire, it, I guess it remains to be seen. Like we're going to need a little bit of time to decide, you know, if this is going to in retrospect be seen as a positive thing or a finger yeah. poke of doom. Yeah. Yeah. And if it's a situation where it's framed and we said this yesterday when we had our initial conversation about the announcement, this footage was going to air on, Dynamite, it, a lot of it's in the framing of it. You know, is it going to be a, a situation where it's it's aired strictly to humiliate in a, or an attempt to humiliate, which I don't think will be effective, uh, CM Punk or embarrass him? Or is this aired maybe with the purpose to try to embarrass Punk, but at least used in a, in a way that's going to drive story forward? Um, you know, if it's the former, there's really no, I don't really see much upside in it. You know, because I don't think Punk is going to be embarrassed by anything they show. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't seem that concerned about it. Um, yeah. And yeah, if it's no. the latter, you know, you can still question whether it's a good idea to air it. But at least, all right, you're using it to to drive stories on your programming, which is what you should be spending your TV time doing, not satisfying, you know, the, 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 your 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 petty squabbles with a former employee. Yeah, yeah. And we've said this before, and and, and, I, and I respond to anybody who says. Shouldn't AEW have the right to defend themselves? Well, it's a company, not a person. Uh, should Tony Khan have a right to defend himself? Sure. And, and he's had plenty of opportunities to answer questions about CM Punk since August. Always pushes. And he always says, I don't want to comment on that. Um, so, uh, so I don't know. We'll find out if it's a good idea or not. I kind of feel like the narrative around it. You know, when I see, here's the funny thing. When I see, um, you know, uh, people that I, I, honest to God, respect so much, like John Pollock. Mm -hmm. I heard a little clip from uh, from post wrestling's uh, WrestleMania roundup uh, after I forget it was I think it was night two night when did when did this news break the Saturday night one. right it was night oh, one yeah. night one okay yeah so they're night one roundup and you know, when I see somebody that I I respect so much and is clearly an incredibly smart individual and he's trying to wrap his head around this. Like, oh, this doesn't seem like, why would they do this? It doesn't seem like a good idea. Yeah. You know, it's not this typical, you know, sort of, you know, IWC podcaster guy. Uh, you know, it's it's like somebody who's actually an honest to God, super journalist guy, yeah. John Pollock. Yeah. And he's like, what's the point? Why are, why are they doing this? It doesn't seem like a good idea. Yeah. That's the, you know, don't, if you don't listen to me or Larson, that's the guy that you listen to if you want like a level headed like, oh, this guy's smart. He's he's got you know he's a mature guy. You know, not the guy. <laughs> two dudes talking about glizzies left and right. <laughs> the glizzy champions over here, Larson. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, you know, listen to John Pollock if you don't yeah. listen to your crazy uncle Stephen Larson. Yeah, 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 a thousand percent. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know what to expect. Could be an abject disaster. Maybe they got an approach to it that's actually interesting and actually really propels stuff forward. I don't know. I don't mm -hmm, yeah. know, but I, more than anything, I just hope it doesn't take the focus away from what they are doing right over there. Mm -hmm, yeah, right. Yeah, you know because there is some good stories they're telling. There's a lot of really good performers over there, um, and I, you know, even the the stuff they've been doing with the Young Bucks and Okada, I've been enjoying. Mm -hmm. And if this, whether it's a stunt, whatever, overshadows that, it's going to be a bummer mm -hmm, because it's yeah. going to be that's going to be the conversation. Yeah. Why did Tony Khan do this rather than focusing on whatever they're doing right over there? Yeah. What else do we know off the top of your head? What else is going on in Dynamite this week? 
Oh, tomorrow. I saw. It. Oh, it's Joe versus Dustin Rhodes. That's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's a huge tag match involving Jericho. Um, it's Mariah May versus Anna J. I saw the graphic for it. That's all I can remember offhand. Oh, listen to this though. Forgotten Media says just saw that going in Raw is among the top 250 most popular sports podcasts in the U.S. on Apple Podcasts. That's actually saying something because there are a shit ton. There's a lot of, of sports podcasts. Like a after lot. a couple of years after we started this, it blew up. It really did. Like every really segment did. on ESPN now has its own like audio podcast version. Mm-hmm. So thanks for the shout. Thanks for yeah. the, the info there. Usually I look at Chartable's Pro Wrestling. Uh, uh, chart, not the actual like uh, Apple uh, or whatever. Yeah. Oh, look at that! Hey, dude, look. Even on the on the in the pro wrestling realm, on Chartable, we're top. We're number ten, top ten, 10. and everybody uh, everybody above us is like a wrestler or uh, like actually like busted opens number one, Cornets two and five. Why does he have two podcasts? I don't know. What's the difference between the experience and the drive through? I have no idea. It's probably just names. I don't know. That is a popular podcast. Apparently. <laughs> Anyways. So let's talk about uh, the Raw After Mania. It opened up. It was uh, it was advertised as first hour commercial free. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna put some, you know, if I may borrow your gimmick for a moment, some cold water on the concept of first hour is commercial free. It's a dog shit thing that they do. It is. Because then for the next two hours, guess what? It's commercial overload. It is. And it is. and just putting that first, and it's usually like 56 minutes, not an hour. 56 minutes commercial free uh, is 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 usually, they like last night, it was literally just Cody and The Rock. Well, not Virtually, yeah. Virtually. virtually. Sure. For the yeah. first 40-some minutes, yeah. 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 But yeah, I, I can't stand when they do the first hour commercial free. I can't I, I might sound like a fuddy-duddy, but when you actually watch it, the viewing experience is terrible. It's terrible because, you, yeah, you get the potential for, you know, the opening segment with Rock and Cody was about 40 minutes. Mm-hmm. Triple H was there for part of it, too. Cody spoke by himself for a bit. There's video packages, so on and so forth. All told, 40-some minutes. Um, and then the two hours following it, the show feels so disjointed because batches are way short. Segments in general are much shorter because they got a shoehorn, you know, 50% more commercials than normally per hour in there. Yeah. You know, so rather than getting 15 minutes or so of commercials for every hour of, of, of programming is what 22 and a half Mm -hmm. per hour. Yeah. And it just really breaks up the flow of the show. Apart from the main event, no match got time really to develop. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, then the second in the last two hours. Yeah. And you had a combined, what, three minutes of women's wrestling in a three hour show? That's inexcusable. It is. It Absolutely is, yeah. inexcusable. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and, and it's, it's, you know, we had conversations yesterday in the pre-show today about, you know, the mystique of the Raw after Mania and, and the expectation that's been kind of established through the years, which, you know, how much of that is based in reality versus a few really good examples. You know, there's a few examples of, of you know, like the Raw after Mania 14, where you had mm-hmm. X-Pac coming back. You had yeah. DX kind of reconstituting itself after Shawn Michaels lost. And he had, you know, the main event, which was the the tag title match, and New Age mm-hmm. Outlaws joining and all that. And, you know, we can probably think of, you know, Raw, even Raw after Mania 33, where the, the Roman comes out, gets booed a ton, this says it's a buy yard. Revival got called up. Uh, Finn Balor came back. Mm-hmm. You know, there is there are plenty of Raw after Manias that either feature debuts or returns or, or, or something or a story pivot. And apart from this opening segment with The Rock and Cody teasing something down the line, it didn't necessarily feel like, all right, this is a reset in terms of, in a major way, in terms of stories that you can expect to see over the next three, six, nine, even 12 months. It just kind of, a lot of it felt like, all right, we're just going to kind of continue the road where we've been going on. And it didn't really feel like, you know, regardless if there's debuts, returns, whatever, if nothing else, the Raw after Mania should maybe feel like a bit of a season premiere. And I, again, apart from the, the Rock Cody segment, nothing on this episode gave those vibes. I agree. But I will say this. 
I get the feeling that the way they're going to move ahead, because I kind of felt like this last year when the draft was approaching, my thoughts on it were because like the transition from Triple H to Vince McMahon, it was still sort of cloudy and overlapping yeah. and Vince yeah. did the Raptor mania, but it felt like Triple H was getting ready to get his pieces in place so that he could actually start that season premiere. You had mentioned this in the pre-show, so I just looked it up now. Dave Schilling, our old friend from the Machinima days and a, a, a wonderful writer, and he's been on, I think, the Ringer uh, Wrestling Podcast and a variety of other things. <clears throat> just a real terrific mind. Mm -hmm. said, uh, and, uh, and on top of that, a former writer for WWE. Mm -hmm. said, Triple H's first Raw after Mania is going to be fascinating. In a sense, the show is harder to produce than WrestleMania itself. To me, it seems like it might be, because you mentioned... There's been a handful of really, really good Raws after Mania that have, I think, contributed maybe too heavily to the reputation of Raw after Mania in terms of what it could be. Specifically, especially when they were doing call-ups, NXT call-ups, who's going to yeah. get called up? You know, what's yeah. what's going to happen there? There are a couple of those that were a big deal. Um, but they seem to be letdowns. And my, my when, I, when I was sitting there, uh, it was after our watch-along, and uh, and I think Mr. Dopa texted me and I was like, yeah, this is kind of a mid Raw after Mania, not a very good show. Um, my thought was. Given that I know Triple H says, you know, the story always good continues and the, you know, the story never ends. And he even made a specific point about, you know, uh, just today I was given the, the format for for Raw, which happens the day after, you know. And I wonder if the logistics of having your giant Super Bowl blow off thing and then have to produce what we've all come to sort of expect, even though it rarely actually delivers on a fresh start, a season premiere, mm -hmm. given especially that we're two weeks away or three weeks away from the draft where everything's going to be shooken up anyways. Yeah. Shook up, shake, shaken up, shaken, shaken. Shake Thank you. Shake it. Um, up. And so I kind of feel like we just need to honestly stop expecting much from the Raw of yeah. Mania yeah. because maybe production wise and creative wise, because you've got all these like twists and turns and surprises now at WrestleMania with the cash in with will Cody finish the story or not with this, that, the other. And then there's stuff like Seth Rollins is probably going to be out for like a month now mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because there's so much going on. It just sort of feels like, the Raw after Mania is just sort of like now the hangover show. They set certain things up, like obviously Rock versus Cody down yep. the line, be it Mania 41 or SummerSlam or whatever. Yeah. But also there's smaller things like Gable is clearly turning on Sammy next week after he yep. loses the Intercontinental Championship yep. match. Yep. Yep. And so what did they do this week? They super faced him up one last time with Alpha Academy to remind us that he's sort of a goofy, lovable character to make his heel turn next week, which is almost certain to happen, yeah, even more impactful. At least that's my read on it. Yeah. But I just kind of feel like, you know, hate to to break it to people, but the Raw of Germania, I just feel like it's probably just not meant to be what it has been a couple times, and maybe those were just flukes. Yeah, yeah. You know, and how uh, we don't know how many of those instances where the, the you know the the Raws after Mania came off as eventful and exciting were done strictly to deliver short-term uh, excitement versus have debuts, returns, et cetera, with actual plans in place and how to utilize that those talents, you know? Yeah. Um, and so if it was strictly a situation, well, we got um, uh, 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 the Raw after Mania, so we got to... Uh, you got, to, you got to really like, you know, uh, get this episode with a lot of excitement strictly for the sake of having excitement rather than, all right, we're having these debuts. What are we going to do with them? Not just mm -hmm. tonight, three months, six months, nine months down the line. Yeah. Um, and if the philosophy now is less, hey, let's pop a number short term and more let's book for the three, six, nine, 12 months, mm -hmm. it would make sense. All right, let's not have unmotivated call ups. Yeah. Let's not have. Uh, 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 let's not save the the returns to the Raw after Mania when those can be more impactful at any other point during the course of the year. There's also the point of because I was thinking about this. We have a, we had a small tease for what could be Uncle Howdy. 
yeah. coming back. Yeah. Um, it was teased in the Bray Wyatt documentary that, you know, and Bo Dallas has been signed with the company, I think since 2022, <clears throat> he was working with Bray before Bray passed. And now there's the idea that, oh, he can come back and be Uncle Howdy. And we're both very interested in that. Mm -hmm. There is a tease for what that could be. Um, but like, I, I'm looking at a, a tweet from Simon Miller, our friend, mm -hmm. uh, from last night uh, in advance of Raw. And he said, random Raw predictions. Tama Tonga and Jacob Fatu debut. But like you just said, and these are and the reason I'm reading this because I saw it. I was like, oh, man, these would be really cool. Yeah. Uh, Uncle Howdy slash Bo Dallas appears. Uh, the Rock, one title change and good times. Now, if you take out the good times, um, no title change. But that those things are really cool, you know. Yeah. But they do yeah. treat the title change stuff as a bit more precious these days, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, the Rock was there. We got a boat. We got an Uncle Howdy. It's just none of those debuts. But I kind of feel like what you're saying is true. People are going to tune into the Raw after Mania anyways. Why wouldn't you want to load up? You got to you got to give something to the people every single week. You got 52 of these Raws that you yeah. got to give the people something. Yeah. And why wouldn't you do Tama Tonga one week when it makes sense for the story? Jacob Fatu another week when it makes sense for yeah. the story, you know? And here's the thing too is if this was the Rock's last appearance cuz he said, you know, I got to take some time away. Uh, and WB programming for a few months. We don't know when Roman is going to be back on. Yeah. You know, and is it going to be a situation where we don't know? Nothing we saw last night addressed the relationship between Rock and Roman after Roman lost the title. Mm -hmm. And I was hoping, though pessimistic, that we'd have something regarding that last night because that feels like that's a pivot point in terms of what's not only going to happen with rock and maybe his match with Cody down the line, but also obviously rock and Roman and could involve the debuts of Jacob Fatu and maybe Tama Tonga, mm -hmm. you know, and how that relates to the bloodline as a whole. Now, again, we don't know if the rock is, is gone starting today for a few months. We don't know if Roman's going to be there Friday. I don't think they've advertised anything for SmackDown yet, or if he's going to be gone for a while. So would it really make sense to debut Jacob Fatu and Tama Tonga as members of the bloodline without either the tribal chief or the final boss being there? Yeah, right. If Assuming they're going to be part of that, which makes all the sense in the yeah. world, how yeah. are they going to pick up those pieces? And and I'll be honest, I do feel like the draft, you know, post-draft is, and because we had heard this last week, last year, post draft is really when they're going to get started yeah. you know telling the stories they want to tell and i just sort of feel like the couple of weeks between now and the draft is just sort of like like i said hangover wrap up loose spin loose in the threads. wheels to a certain extent yes yeah spin the wheels but also just sort of wrap up loose ends you know and like the gable turn is going to be one of those things if he gets separated from alpha academy from the draft and he's a bad guy and he's like the wrestling machine chad gable or whatever he's going to be Maybe he'll be the guy to, to to beat Logan Paul. I don't know, which would kind of make him a face. But um, yeah. <clears throat> excuse me. But yeah, I don't know. I do think that it's it's you know last night. I think there was a lot of anticipation because it's like okay, big Paul Levesque era is here. Raw Tremaine is going to be a big deal. And uh, you know, even it's funny because even last year when Vince McMahon you know just showed up and started running things. If you looked at what the original plan was, it wasn't a huge departure from what Vince came in and did, evidently. No, like, no. the basic skeleton was still there. It's just Vince came in and Vinced it up. Um, and so, I don't know. I kind of feel like they just sort of are going to spin their wheels until the draft. Draft's going to be a big deal. And then after the draft, we're going to get all the big, you know, NXT people are going to be in the draft. You said earlier in the pre-show, Ily is eligible for the draft. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what NXT is able to do in the draft, what mm -hmm. Raw and SmackDown do in the draft, and then we'll just go from there. Exactly. Exactly. Let's, uh, let's talk about, uh, more of this Rock and Cody segment as it relates to what we can expect in the future. So following that segment, uh, on the most recent Wrestling Observer Radio, Meltzer and Alvarez had a conversation speculating about when a match between The Rock and Cody may take place. These transcripts come to you from WrestlingNews.co. I will be playing the role of Brian Alvarez. Awesome. Steve, as yes. always, oh yeah, will be Dave Meltzer. Yeah, absolutely. So Alvarez said the following, quote, But as I was scrolling through, it's like that's all everyone is talking about. What did The Rock give Cody? 
So a bit of a sidebar here. At the end of this extended promo uh, segment between The Rock and Cody, The Rock handed Cody something, and Cody immediately put it in his pocket. We don't know what it is. It was like an uncle giving something to his you know, nephew, like, hey, kid, here you go. And it's like, yeah. you know, it's a 50 or something like that. It's exactly. a, $2, a $2 bill. That's what it is. Yes. $2 bill. So Alvarez continues. What do you think he gave him? That's what people love. They love a mystery. And they have to follow the show every week to find out what's going on in the story. And this is going to be a long-term mystery because Rock is leaving. But I thought it was very, very clever. And they did. And what they did, because clearly they're doing Rock and Cody one-on-one. I mean, that was made patently obvious in this segment here. Well, that is certainly the plan right now. I'm Alvarez. I'm, I'm Meltzer, by the way. Yes, and not for a long time. Maybe next year's WrestleMania. And Alvarez continues, hey, you know what? Uh, if You know what? If this guy felt good and he did a great that match, he didn't get hurt. I mean, if he thinks he can do two more years and it should be Rock and Cody next year and Rock and Roman Reigns a year after, that's two gigantic WrestleMania that you got based on those matches. Yeah, it's going to be big, but man, I mean, it's natural. You know, I mean, they booked it. He'd been and Cody, so they booked it. You know, yeah, probably is a good idea to keep Cody's champion, although that's not 100%. All right, man. We got to. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, at some point, or so, I really, some up and coming podcast needs to start transcribing our gibberish. Larson. Oh, I know. I know. I can only imagine how, how my inarticulate uh, meanderings uh, look on paper. Um, you know, obviously, this feels like speculation on their part, but. Yeah, of course. Given the weight of that segment, which I thought, even though it was long, I thought was really good. Mm-hmm, yeah. Because you had Sinister Rock kind of giving Cody his flowers, but at the same time, you know, asking him to touch the, the universal title, the undisputed title, putting on his shoulder and just saying, oh, this looks pretty good here. That was the most wonderful movie villain thing. It really was. You know, hey, can I hold your title? And Cody's like, oh, shit, what do I say? I don't want to look weak. I don't want to be disingenuous. I don't want to come off as, you know, so he, he does a smart thing. Can I hold your title? You know, collateral, basically. Exactly. And then so he gives it to Rock and yeah, Rock. Oh, yeah, this looks good. And then he gives it back to him. I thought I thought Rock, I thought Rock did a really great job. Yeah, I thought the crowd. I actually thought the crowd was phenomenal in this segment. And The Rock had such a fun time playing with them. Did it make the segment run long? Almost definitely. But I, and I know a lot of people, uh, there's mixed feelings about this. A lot of people are like, oh, it was too long. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a really well-executed segment. I did too. I, 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 I thought it was really well done as well. Um, so yes, based on the segment, it seems pretty obvious. We're going to get a, a Rock versus Cody match at some point. We don't mm. know... If the end game is still Rock Roman Reigns, that's the assumption I think we're all operating under. Um, I know The Rock says he's a long gamer. Does that mean three years worth of WrestleManias, though? If they I mean, do Rock Cody next year at 41 and then Roman Rock at 42? That's Alvarez not... ain't wrong about Rock looking good in that match. Oh, yeah. He looked great. You know? Um, and I know it probably gets more difficult as the years advance, but, yeah. um, but yeah, I mean, you got to ask, you know, what happens with Roman, what they're going to do at SummerSlam. Is that going to be a thing or is this strictly going to be a WrestleMania thing? I get the feeling that it's more likely to be a SummerSlam or a WrestleMania as opposed to a Saudi show, which had been speculated as well just mm-hmm. because the Saudis, they pony up so much money. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, no, I, I I get the feeling that, you know, Rock looked to be in, in really, really good shape. I was completely proven wrong on that one, and I'm very mm-hmm. happy to, to to be proven yeah, wrong totally, on that. Yeah, totally, totally. Um, but uh, but the bigger question, of course, is what did he slip him? Assuming it's not a two dollar bill <sighs> or a fifty cent piece, you know? Um, <laughs> yeah, right. You know, I've seen speculation. Uh, that it was Dusty's Hall of Fame ring. I've seen that a few places, but why? Unless there's a story behind it, I don't know why The Rock would have that. Um, okay, I thought so... maybe it was something that Dusty gave The Rock's dad because The Rock mentioned they were friends. But then it has to relate to because when The Rock handed it to Cody, he said, Don't you break my heart ever again. 
And that's in that's in relation to Cody doing the old like, hey, I'm going to give you my spot, taking it back. Yes. You know, and then slandering Rock's family's name. Yeah. Um, yeah, it seems, you know, it, it's it, like he said, it's obviously the kind of thing you don't have to look at it. You got to think that maybe part of their conversation like this might be baked into the story. Yeah. And hey, maybe we'll get it in the behind the scenes thing. Could be. Where Cody says, and I, because I don't know how much of that's going to be kayfabe and how much that's going to be like I know, I serious, know. you know, I know. how much is going to be real. But if they add a bit of story to it, where Cody gives his spot up, maybe in the course of that, he'll give up. Uh, he'll say, hey, you know what? I want you to have this is my dad's Hall of Fame ring and you carry the torch for now. And then once you've done, once your business is out of the way, you know, I'll get it back. But for now, this is my blessing to you. Yeah. And it's like a, a bonding thing. Yeah. And, and that's rock giving it back. I could totally see that being the situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, cause the rocks talked about he and Cody's interaction, even before the press event in Vegas, when Cody said, no, I'm going to face Roman. Um, and, and, you know, we see B roll of them shaking hands and, and chatting, but whether it's that conversation, there was another in-person conversation that happened backstage before the segment on SmackDown where Cody gave up his spot. I mean, it's mm -hmm. entirely possible something like that happened where Cody given up his spot, to the rock, you know, it, there was a physical manifestation of his blessing, mm -hmm. whether yeah. it's Dusty's hall of fame ring, something else. Mm -hmm. And then the rock giving that thing back after now that this part of the story has ended, uh, that's entirely possible. I don't know. I don't know. And we didn't get any further uh, illumination as far as what that was going to be because after that segment, we didn't see Cody again on, on, on Raw. He just put that thing in his pocket. Now I guess he's advertised for SmackDown this Friday. You know, you would think as a backstage interviewer for WB, that'd be like the first question you'd want to yeah. ask. What was it? So I don't know if we're going to, and if he's going to be coy about it, if he's going to, if it's going to be in the thing that's coming out tomorrow, mm -hmm. don't know. Don't know. Um, before we move on with the rest of our raw recap, raw after mania recap, want to bring this up. We achieved another goal here at going in raw, which is great. You know, after such a long time in stagnation, raw after mania delivered us our latest subscriber number palindrome 201, 102 thousand subscribers on yes. youtube and uh and we achieved it in the i think middle of the night or early this morning i think i woke up and we were one under so when i woke up this morning we had we were actually over oh. and i checked it again and we'd fallen back down to the oh. palindrome and that's when i sent it to you okay okay because so i had one loaded up that was 201 101 yeah when i woke up uh, so yeah, thanks to the friendos. We got to the Thank latest palindrome. Much. The next palindrome, I think, is 202 202. Sure, and that, I think that's right. I think that's the next one, yeah. But yeah. you know, me, I want to go to 222,222. That's the next, well, before like, we huge get there, we got to get to 220. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, that's, that's 211,112 is the one after that, yes, probably. yeah, yeah, that's after that, yeah. Well, I guess so, it'd be 203,302. Yeah, okay, yeah, 204, 402. Yeah, yeah, we can just keep raising so, the number in the thousands and hundreds position by one if it's still a palindrome. Exactly. So, yeah. and I want I want to hit every palindrome. Well, I mean, uh, if we get to 222,222, we will. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's the real one. That's the one I really want to get. Wow. All twos. Okay. okay. Um, so, uh, that's exciting stuff. Thank you very much. Continue yes, thank you, on, onward and upwards. We've got... Uh, we have all of 800, no, 975 people watching right now. Hi, everybody. So if you could do us a solid, if you haven't already, if you like the banter between me and Larson, hit that thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and the notify bell, because guess what? What? We're bringing back NXT reviews. Starting tomorrow. Tomorrow at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. live. We're going live with our NXT reviews. We're bringing back. Eastern. Eastern, Sorry, that's why Eastern. Eastern. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. I'm Eleven yeah, Pacific. Confused by time codes. Uh, we get on Thursday. We're going to be live again at the same time, eleven Pacific, two Eastern, with our AEW brawl in footage review. Mm. 
And then on Friday, we're going to be live at the same time. So now we're Are we going to be live this Friday when we've already done our five podcasts as of Thursday? Uh, some to discuss, but hey, everything we do a little bit more. Oh, I understand. We got to do our we got to do our guest the Meltzer ratings on Friday morning, anyways. Ooh, yeah, exciting stuff. So we'll um, see, and also basketball on Friday, you know, and basketball. I know we're gonna get our basketball in. Uh, so yeah, uh, join us for all of that, and uh, yeah, because you know it's raw after mania, so going on raw after mania. Uh, making a couple changes here at the channel, bringing back some stuff that you guys wanted. A lot of you said, hey, we want yeah. NXT reviews, so goodbye Collision reviews. Yeah. <laughs> Hello NXT reviews. I'm still uh, trying to... So, so, of course, we got trivia tonight. I usually do get home until a little bit before 9. Yeah, right. So I'm trying to still work out the scheduling of watching NXT. Like, do I take an hour tomorrow uh, tonight and watch part of it, finish the rest of, uh, tomorrow morning? Mm -hmm, yeah. And how I work that in regard uh, in relation to my workout schedule because I yeah, gotta right, get my yeah. I gotta get my workout in my Wednesday. Gotta do that, yeah. Well, hey, you know that's so this is all things to work to figure out. out. So if the notes tomorrow are a little bare bones in terms, especially in terms of promos, isn't Garrick's doing the notes tomorrow? I don't know. We all, it's never been confirmed. Okay, we'll email Garrick's and find out. All right. Yeah. Um. And uh, yeah. If not, I might try the thing you suggested last night, as far as the mm -hmm. transcribing thing. Oh, yeah, give it a shot. See if it maybe, works. Maybe. Hell, maybe I'll try it. Um, so, yeah, that's good stuff. Also, we've got the Friendo Club set up. We got a lot of new Friendo Club set up members over the past 48 hours or so, over the past three, four days, actually, uh, thanks to the Big Blue Predictions Challenge. Well, the Friendo Club set up, I, forgot, I neglected to put up Friendo Cast yesterday. It will go up today. That is a promise. Um, Steve. And, and, uh, and that's the bonus episode. Yeah, what? Don't break my heart again. Oh wow! And then what would you give me? Just like a, I have a, guitar a pretzel, pick up here a somewhere. chocolate covered pretzel that you rubbed in your butt crack. I have a, an old <laughs> guitar pick here. Rats. Oh, there you go. Um, but yeah, friend of the club said if you get bonus episodes, you get access to our Big Blue Predictions Challenge. Cruz is our new Big Blue Predictions champion, our first WrestleMania Big Blue Predictions champion, and he sent us a message today and said, "Hey, just found out I won." So he wasn't even around. He just found out. Yeah. And uh, and he gave me the info for what he wants for the big blue picture. So I'll be unveiling oh, that on tomorrow's episode. Very exciting. exciting. Uh, and I'll send that hat out to Cruz as well. Uh, you and I today are going to discuss the next big blue predictions challenge. Uh, yes. And to participate, we do. We uh, we offer two ways to do it. Patreon.com slash Stephen Larson. Click on the Friendo Club setup or you can click join right here at YouTube.com slash Steve and Larson. Yes. Uh, so let's go ahead and just dive into the let's Raw. Let's dive game. into yeah. it. So Raw opens up with the game, Triple H. Oh, man. He comes to the ring. Celebrates himself. Showered with thank you, Hunter Chance. Right. He, he said, that's funny. I came out here to thank you. That's what he said. He said, less and than then, 20. Sorry, you got it. Oh, I'll do Triple H. I mean, yeah. your Triple H impression is really good. That's been established. So. Yeah, it's not great. It's I like, I prefer it when he himself calls in. But anyways, he said, Less than 24 hours ago, you all made something very special happen. I can now really tell you. And I love this because, like, he booked it. He said, that was the greatest WrestleMania of all time. By every metric there is, every standard, by everything you've said, it was the biggest WrestleMania ever. I simply came out here to say thank you to be the game, Paul Levesque. No, he didn't say that. He said thank you to the crowd. He said, on Saturday night, I had the privilege of standing here and welcoming everybody to WrestleMania. I have the same pleasure of welcoming you to Monday Night Raw. I also said, welcome to a new time, a new era. So right now, I'd like you to welcome the man that will lead us in that era, Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes. So adrenaline in his soul. He makes his entrance. Uh, he grabs the mic. Oh, sorry. There's You deserve a chance for Cody. Triple H says to him, Steve, go ahead. You continue being Triple H. Before I leave, I just wanted to say congratulations. You do deserve it. Thank you for ending that historic streak and not only crushing gates to WrestleMania, but a new gate of over 20,000 people tonight. Let's get ready to suck it. Before I go, I got a call two hours after Mania for some guys at our studio. So the, the, some, the production guys put together a video package for Cody, but like they're selling so many tickets now that they took off like the normal The stage. giant Tron, yeah. The the giant, there. There's no giant Tron. There's just people there, real humans. Which I actually, I like the smaller stage when they can fill the arenas. It's kind of cool, you it know. Uh, and so instead, like uh, a, a middle school substitute teacher 
who's like, I don't know what the lesson plan is. I'm just going to squeak, 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 go down to AV. Hey, uh, Charles and Jim, can you run down to, to AV? Don't take too long. Wheel over the TV, the 32 inch with the straps on it so it doesn't fall off the, the yep. thing. Yep. Squeak, 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 squeak. They plug it in. So they've got this like little, you know, 32 inch LED screen. Uh, he's like, you know, we had to bootleg this over here. And uh, and they they air this this, you know, really lovely, albeit indulgent uh, video package on. Cause we've seen I've seen enough video packages set to mid songs. I don't need another one. If you're not look, if you're not going to do something to that David Kushner song they use for the uh, the Brock Lesnar, I don't want it because that thing can drive me to tears. Yeah. Otherwise, I don't want it. Yeah. It was maybe another... maybe do some national. There we go. Yeah. Um, it was, you know, it was another Cody career retrospective leading up to his win at WrestleMania. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's pretty much all it was. So you come back to him, he's crying, laughing. Uh, they have footage of everybody celebrating his win after WrestleMania. So he's in the ring, he's wiping tears away. He's hugging Triple H. And he says, so we're all after WrestleMania, Philadelphia. What do you want to talk about? He says, I felt like that I knew what I wanted to talk about, talk about, but something I heard, Samantha. So he looks to Samantha Irvin. I'm sure you know what I'm going to ask you. Please, just one more time. So with with all the gusto that she uh, usually does, it announces him again as undisputed champion. And so he says, it was two years ago today that I came out here and laid out my goals. Last night, my dream became reality. I had been told the altitude in Philly is about 39 feet above sea level, but the air in here seems thin. I think it's because you and I are standing at the top of the mountain. The champion... Previously on top, the tribal chief, head of the table. Steve, put him up. Might be the last time. Roman Reigns. Wang. Roman this Reigns. 1,316 days as champion. We don't have to like him, but I certainly acknowledge what he's done, and perhaps he's the most important superstar of our generation. So that leads to thank you, Roman Chance. It says, a big thing they ask when you get into this business is why. Why do you do this? Make the sacrifices. If you can indulge me, I'll show you my main why. So up on the scoreboard... It's got footage of his daughter saying, uh, uh, finish, finish your story. story. Finish yeah. your story. It was very cute. It was. And so Cody says, Daddy just doesn't go to work, but works in the main event. And when he fights, he is no longer challenger. He is champion. This is unique for me. I have always stood in line, but now the line is for me. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Cody Rhodes. Once undesirable, became undeniable. And now, da 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 undisputed. So I'm up. Might be the last time we can do this, Larson. Oh, yeah. And then that brings out The Rock says. The Rock says. So The Rock comes out. An Undertaker chant breaks out. And he's kind of, I say shook. The character is. But you could tell The Rock is tickled that this the crowd is so This whole time he's lively. trying not to laugh. This yeah, whole time. Yeah. So uh, he, he puts up the mic to talk. The crowd cuts him off like he's Dominic. They start telling him, shut the fuck up. So he says now, nah, and this goes on for a while. He says, uh, the crowd starts saying Rocky sucks. He says, the rock is a lot of things, but Philly, but I'm uh, sorry, Philly, but sucks. Isn't one of them before we begin. The rock came out here to deliver flowers to Cody Rhodes and also say Philly broke another record for the largest gathering of trailer park trash. And he started cracking up and uh, they started cussing. Yeah, he started. He started. He, there was a couple f bombs there. So, anyways, this back and forth. Cody raises the belt to sort of calm the crowd down, but then Rock does the same thing and gets them riled back up. So he says, "The Rock came out here, no fireworks, no blood spill, just you and Rock, and I want to give you your flowers. You did it. You completed your story. You faced all odds and beat Roman in the middle of the ring. One, two, three. You think all the stuff you had to overcome, I even made a belt and whipped you like a dog, boy. Put it was weird because it was like part rock, a little sprinkle of like sinister macho man, and then a sprinkle of Trump in there. <laughs> it was like sort of rambly bambly. Somebody it was. In, in the somebody in the comments mentioned the Trump thing. I was like, yeah, it's kind of a Trump thing right there. So, anyways, he says, you know who else did? Your daddy in heaven, as you you and most people know, your daddy. Yeah, he was my hero. The soul man and your dad were good friends. I'm thinking maybe I'm not sure my dad is proud of me for what I did, but I thought, I don't care. You did it. You finished your story. You got a brand new belt, new nameplate, new side plates. And he goes into how he became people's champion. He said, he said, uh, is there any way 
anyway, because somebody in the crowd called his title fake. And yeah. he said, no, 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 no. Muhammad Ali's, was it his widow? Head, widow his widow bestowed yeah. upon me widow this belt. And this on me. Muhammad Ali gave him the title of people's champion. You know? Yeah, yeah. He said, is there any way The Rock can hold that title? And the crowd's like, ooh. So he says, no fireworks tonight. I grew up in pro wrestling as you did, but I've never held that belt. <laughs> so Cody then Cody. says, says yeah, go ahead. well, you want to hold this one? You can hold it for a moment as long as I can hold yours. And uh, Rock agrees. Yes. He says, I'd be honored. So they exchange the belts. Rock looks at it, puts it on his shoulder, says, I got to say, this kind of feels right. Thank you, Cody. That means a lot. Cody is, you know, and many know, the Rock has to go away for a little while now. Trust me, I don't want to leave. I made wrestling cool again. Cody made it cool again. Just remember, Rock is going away, but when the Rock comes back, whether you're champion or not, the Rock is coming back for you. Cody just says, I'm looking forward to it. Mm, I am too. The world's going to look forward to it. One more thing. You beat Roman Reigns right in the middle of the ring. One, two, three. However, less than 24 hours before that, The Rock beat you in the middle of the ring. One, two, three. So, Cody, your story with Roman is over and you did it. But our story has just begun. And then Cody says, I believe that because you're the boss, right? The final boss. But you're also my literal boss. I don't dispute that, but I don't think you'll dispute this. I'm the champion. I am their champion. And boss, that means I'm your champion. Crowd sort of goes, wow. about that." He gets right in Rock's face when he says that. Yeah, Rock says, yeah, you are their champion. The world's champion. You are my champion. Cody Rhodes, there's one last thing before the final boss rides off into the sunset. I have something for you. No fireworks. <laughs> I love that he keeps on saying no fireworks. I know. And he takes it out of his pocket. <laughs> and it's not a middle finger. Yeah. it's uh, He just sort of puts it in Cody's hand. We don't see it. He says, you don't have to open your hand to know what this is. Don't you ever break my heart again if you smell what the final boss is cooking. And then he walks off into the sunset. And Cody is seemingly shook. Dis- shook, displeased perchance about what he has in his hand and very slyly puts in his pocket so mm-hmm. the audience mm-hmm. can't see it. Uh, then we're backstage. Damian Priest with an awesome suit mm-hmm. is arriving with the rest of Judgment Day at the arena. Uh, also arriving earlier in the day. Awesome truth. Sammy with his family. Um, and then Nakamura's hit music hits because he has a match against NXT champion Ilya Dragunov. Yeah, I kind of like. I kind of feel like wouldn't shock me if he gets. They're gonna do it weird. He gets drafted while still NXT champion, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then what's the next big show they've got? It's probably is it Battleground or no? Mm-hmm. It's called what is it called? I don't remember what it's called. I, I don't know if they've announced it, it yet. They announced something that they then changed dates for. Oh, that's right. Forget which one. Battle. Oh, it, it is, is Battleground. Battle okay. Look at me okay. in my memory. Okay. Wow. So you think it's going to be Ilya versus Trick? Trick. And then, like, Ilya will have already been drafted and he'll drop the title there and then be, I don't know, probably, hopefully, whatever brand Gunther's on. Yeah. Because no. I want that forever feud back. Heck yeah. Heck That'd yeah. Be awesome. June 5th. Okay, so that's uh, well, a couple just about months. a month after the yeah, a month or two after the draft. Yeah, about six weeks after the draft. Uh, Ilya gets the win here. It was a fun match. Just didn't give it a ton of time. Um, Ilya hits an H bomb, and then his finisher uh, to get the win over Nakamura. Uh, then we get some Mania highlights. This one about Seth and Drew, uh, ultimately with Priest cashing in. Um, and then we see Drew earlier in the day arriving at the arena. He's got a hoodie on. He's you know he's got the hoodie up. Mm-hmm. You can tell he's very upset. No, he's haven't. got a match against Jay Uso, Ricochet, and Bronson Reed tonight to determine number one contender for the World Heavyweight Championship. And then Judgment Day make their way to the ring, and we get our first commercial break of the show. Come back from commercial, we get a Judgment Day promo. Yeah, so Finn says to all the haters, the doubters, and everyone who thought Rhea couldn't win, who thought Damien couldn't cash in, I want you to know you're all wrong. And then Dom grabs the mic, gets booed a lot, 
gives mommy her flowers. Rhea's music hits. She comes out. Uh, she says, WrestleMania was almost perfect. We have a couple new problems we need to deal with. Two things came out of this weekend. Mommy's always on top. And this is a new era for the Judgment Day. So then Finn introduces Priest World Champion. I guess this is sort of like... So I was saying, you know, Seth did such a good job elevating this title. And I get it. It's Raw after Mania. You put Cody Rock on first. I get that. But like, Damian Priest is World Heavyweight Champion. No video package. I know. Got a comedy segment with our truth and then a match where like his crew loses to John Cena, Miz, and our truth. Like, I know. I, know. It, I don't know. I kind of feel like they should have been done a bit better, you know? I know. There's an opportunity to put the titles on more equal ground. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You know, and, it, 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 you know, I'm happy that Priest got some promo time, mm -hmm. you know, but where's the story of his journey? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Yeah. You know, and, and, and now that uh, half the members of Judgment Day are the top champions of their respective divisions, mm -hmm. maybe not book them like, uh, 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 sorry, two fifths of Judgment Day are the respective champions of, of their division. Don't make the unit as a whole seem like bumbling fools for the most part. Because yeah, not fodder for John Cena. No, certainly not. Awesome. Truth. You know, like book them as some <laughs> at least capable, you know, <laughs> you're not even at. Hey, look, we're not even asking for a threat. No, not even capable, <laughs> capable, just, just capable. At least for just... one night. They're high on, 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 on the idea that, hey, we got the top two titles on Raw in this faction. We're feeling good. Let's go and get a W. Let me ask this post draft. Yeah. Where's Cody land? Where's priest land? They got the Netflix thing coming up, but they also got SmackDown. Yeah, it's not until USA next year up. though. Um, yeah. You know, I kind of feel like with raw going to Netflix and you USA being the new home of SmackDown, they might want Cody on raw. Mm -hmm. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Judgment day lands on SmackDown. Rhea's there with Bianca. If she doesn't move, yeah. Um, I think that's a possibility. Bailey would move to Raw then. Yeah. 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 yeah I think. Oh, that's great. A we get a title switch again. No, we don't have to do that anymore. Thankfully. <laughs> anyway, so Priest has a mic. He's getting some You Deserve a Chance. He says, Well, now they don't have to do a title switch. That's why I said, Yeah. 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 Um, he's, he's, he's getting some You Deserve a Chance. He says, You're damn right I do. Now the Terror Twins, he and Rhea. Stand before you as world champions. It goes without saying, we always rise to the occasion. The whole world needs to follow suit. All rise for the judgment day. And as he says that, our truth gets in the ring and joins them standing in the ring. And Priest is like, what the hell are you doing here? And Truth says, well, I brought the tag titles back to judgment day. So they argue about whether he's a member or not. And this eventually brings out the Miz. Miz says, Truth, I don't want to be in judgment day. And I know you don't actually want to be in it either. So Miz pulls Truth away and says, since you're, uh, you're introducing new champs, let me introduce you to the new Raw Tag Champs, Awesome Truth. So Finn says, ah, oh, you think you're funny. You know what else is funny? It's that the Awesome Truth is going to have the shortest reign in history. Since you want to interrupt us, why don't you defend these titles right here, right now? So Truth says, well, there's only three of us. And everybody's confused because there's only two members of Awesome Truth. Um, and Truth says, let's have a six-man tag against me, Miz, and the guy you can't see. Mm -hmm. And Arab, you know, like Judgment Day, assuming he's talking about little, little Jimmy. Jimmy. Um, and so JD says, "You, Miz, and the guy I can't see, you're on." And Miz says, "I want to see our partner. I brought him to, to celebrate out, uh, but let's bring let's bring out to let's bring him out to fight." Yeah. Um, and so we get this match initially two on three handicap match, but we all know who the guy you can't see is. Yeah, the crowd was like immediately clued in. They were like, "Oh yeah, it's John Cena." Even, yeah, like Judgment Day is like, "Oh, <laughs> it's the it's the Ludwig Kaiser Duh. Uh, <laughs> meme." Yeah, as far as it's putting the pieces together. Even it's this like, felt it's, a little bit awkward because like the match happened and it was like a while before John Cena's music. It was he hits. came out for the finish. He got the he hot tag. The yeah, exactly. Because Awesome Truth were 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 were, were losing the match, and he comes like it's some a hot cool tag. New music though. Yeah, he did. I liked his I liked his new theme song. That was cool. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I need like a real spotlight for him. And then this was just like for John Cena to come out and goof around. 
five uh, or six moves of doom, five moves of doom, whatever it look, is. You just think it was entertaining. It was fine. It was entertaining. Like I was like, oh, cool. Cena's there. That's neat. And he was it, doing his over the top Ricky Stanicky sting. It did nothing for Judgment Day, though. No, nothing. it didn't. It didn't. But you know what? One good story, Larson. Uh, after that, we had an Andre the Andre the Giant Battle Royal highlight. Uh, it showed Bronson winning, and then a little thing where he says, "When I step into the ring, I don't just step in to win, but I go in to break my up." The Andre Battle Royal was the first step. Ricochet, Drew, Jay, I'm going to show you uh, what a world heavyweight champion should be. But then during it, there was like a little glitchy glitch. And then there is a word at the bottom that says hello. Hello. Which, if I'm not mistaken, a synonym for hello is howdy. 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 Yeah. Uh, then uh, we get a graphic that says there's over 200,000 people uh, attended all the shows across Mania Weekend. And then Rhea is going after Dom backstage about uh, trusting Andrade, about the events at WrestleMania. And then a chair comes flying in and bashes her right in the head. Yeah. It was and Liv it's Liv Morgan. Morgan. Watch me. Boo. Who threw the chair, so she attacks Rhea in the hallway, uh, kicks her into the wall. Referees and officials come to break it up. Dom checks on her, and there's a camera there, of course. So Dom's like, camera, man, get out of here, and brushes the camera aside. And with that one motion, the camera goes back down to the ringside area through the timekeeper area and to uh, uh, start of the next match, which was Indy Hartwell versus Roxanne Perez. Yeah, it was, you know, it wasn't the smoothest thing in the world, but I love that they're trying new things and it was different and interesting and everybody yeah. clues into it. And that's what you want to do, man. It's a whole universe, so to speak. And make it feel like one. Yeah, let's see these things just go ahead and happen. I just like that, you know, Dom says, get out of here. And the cameraman just starts, for whatever reason, running <laughs> to, the, to the ring. Yeah. Um, no, I thought that was good. I thought it was He good. was getting uh, cues, Steve. He was getting he was getting cues, man. Hilton was there. Uh, after that, we had uh, Indy Hartwell versus NXT Women's Champion Roxanne Perez. Um, did this have any commercial breaks? Or was this really short? No, it was, it was really super short. short. Yeah, it was a super short, huh? Yeah. Uh, Roxanne got the win because Candice was trying to help out Indy by sweeping Roxanne's legs. And then Indy was like, oi, why are you, why are you doing that? And then she was obsessing with that and then allowed Roxanne... Uh, to come in, get an eye rake off the distraction, and then hit a Pop Rocks to get the win. Afterwards, Candice is like yelling at Indy. Uh, and then we see highlights of WrestleMania weekend again. Sammy's backstage. Yeet! Cong Yeet! Jay congratulates him for his win. Sammy does the same. They hit the old handshake that they had, and Jay says, Yeet! Yeet! And uh, and then we've got Roxanne backstage. She runs in Natalia, talks about uh, they're going to have a thing on NXT tomorrow night, which is tonight. Uh, and then Sami Zayn comes down and he's got a promo. He says, this means a lot to me. I've been lucky the last few years. I've done some historic stuff the last couple of years. He says, uh, I want to do something historic this year. And I think I did. He said, but actually the person who made history was Gunta the ring general. He says, you can't take it away from him. 666 days as champion. The devil. Uh, he says, uh, he is without question the best ick champion of all time. But guess what? I beat him. Let's talk about that. I had a lot of help from each and every one of you. There were times I didn't believe and you did. Seeing my wife and son before I went out helped me. Seeing my brother Kevin Owens helped me. There was one guy who helped me too. And then uh, Imperium's music hits. Dead. <laughs> The guy says, for the past two years, do you want to do it, Steve? Daring general. <laughs> Put all his heart and dedication to making the Intercontinental title the most prestigious title of WWE. Let me tell you, it breaks my heart to see someone like you holding that belt right there. Look at you. You look like all these peasants in Philly tonight. You look like a bum. <laughs> congrats, W. Oh, this is where he says, congrats, WWE University New Intercontinental Champion. Looks like a bum. Yeah. Don't worry on behalf of. During general, <laughs> we are here to make this right. So we get uh, Kaiser and Vinci. They surround the ring. Chad Gable, a thank you, comes to the ring to make the save. We get a tag match, but first we get a video package. Sheamus is coming back. Shamo, been gone seven months. Been a long time. Goodness gracious! I hope 
It's a shameful thing. Lobster head. Oh, too many limes. Too many limes. Give huh? me some too many limes, man. Come on. People will yeah. pop for that. They would. They would. Uh, so we get this tag match. Uh, not surprisingly, Sammy and Chad Gable get the win here. Gable <laughs> is firmly an Alpha Academy uh, like, sort of Turned mode. it up to 11, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All the shush, all the thank yous. So uh, Sammy hits Vinci, of course, with a Huluva kick in the corner, and then he tags in Gable so Gable can hit a Chaos Theory to get the win. Yeah. Keep that in mind for their backstage bit later on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So So then we get a Jay promo. He says, mm -hmm. WrestleMania 40 was personal ooze, but tonight it's just me. Drew, yeet, down. Ricochet, yeet, down. Bronson, yeet, down. If y'all would become a number one contender, give me a yeet. Yeet. And then if Jay gets a promo, we see Ricochet warming up. He's doing boxing moves, yeah. which he never does in the ring. No. Uh, so after that, we've got Andrade hanging out with Pierce, Aldis, and Ava. Andrade leaves. He says, adios. Aldis is like, hey, good job, Pierce. So I need Andrade. But that, I'm just going to I thought Andrade it. already already signed with SmackDown, though. Uh, signing Andrade was he? Is I thought so. Here? Yeah, you probably. That's where all the story that. stuff with the LWO happened. I guess so. Yeah, I don't know, man. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe not. Yeah, he did. He have he had a contract. No, he I signed thought, with Raw. He signed with Raw. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. He just showed up on SmackDown. My bad. Yeah, he just showed up. It's confusing when they have split brands, but no one actually like. <laughs> Nobody stays with their don't brand. Don't actually respect it. I know it's all confusing. So, anyways, uh, yeah, because yeah, because he was getting recruited by Dutch Judgment yeah, Day, but then Dom went over to yeah, SmackDown and brought Andrade. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's anyways, they all uh, they're it's all talking though. shit because the draft is coming up, and poor Ava's sitting there like, "We're gonna get jacked." NXT's I gonna know, get I jacked. I know. We're losing Braun and and, and and Ilya. Ilya, and we're probably gonna take on like Apollo Cruz again. <laughs> You're gonna get nobody. Uh, so anyways, Chelsea Green comes in. She's like uh, mad because she wasn't at WrestleMania. And uh, she, she said, I'm going to go to management about this. And Pierce is like, we saw the emails and texts and DMs, which is why we're going to have a little collab. She's like, I want my moment. She's like, your moment awaits. So she had a match next, but it was a 37 second match against Jade Cargill, who just gives her one pump kick and a jaded gets the win over yeah. Chelsea Green. Yep. Uh, then Sammy's backstage. He bumps into the Alpha Academy. He asks for a moment with Chad Gable and says, I appreciate the help and I owe you a favor, but tonight we're even. I had that one and I tagged you in so you can get the win in the silver platter. And Gable's like, uh, no, that's not, that's definitely not it. And it's funny because we were doing the, the watch along last night. We joked about this happening. We were doing a Seinfeld routine. We uh, were. I we think were. You got, you got, that's the uh, favor. That wasn't the favor. So Sammy's like, nah, I'm kidding. Uh, you want a chance at this. I get it. It'd be uh, an honor to ch- have you challenge for this title next week, my hometown of Montreal. Mm-hmm. And Chad Gable says, cool. Yeah. Uh, after that, Drew McIntyre's music hits for the main event, but man, he is not messing around. He had a steam on, uh, on uh, Mr. McIntyre here. Trucks to the ring. He says, cut the music. He says, what happened was utter BS. Five minutes and 40 se- 46 seconds. That's how long my moment lasted. And people are like clowning him. And he's like, oh, some of you found it funny. Well, it's five minutes longer than you last and bet. Before I fly off the handle, uh, uh, Seth, I respect you. You stood by your convictions. We shared a moment only warriors know about. Thank you for that. Then that bondage undertaker, Damian Priest, screwed it up. He says, I stick my foot up your ass, but you'd probably enjoy it. Money in the bank is a joke. It cost me the title twice. It cheapens everything Seth and I did. You're nothing but a transitional champion, and after tonight, that belt comes home to Drew McIntyre. He says, but uh, uh, you didn't cause the finish. It was that prick CM Punk. I told you I was going to win the title. Have my moment and rub it in your face. It was no accident. I was within striking distance. Everything said everything, and that's it. The second I take my eyes off you, you sweep my leg and take me out with your brace. You think what happened was bad before? I'm going after your biggest weakness, your whole damn body. Uh, quite the opposite happened though, because we get this main event and Drew McIntyre is yeah. about to beat, uh, I forget who I Jay know. Uso. Yeet. Oh, yeet. And instead Sam Punk grabs his, grabs his leg and Drew's like, what the hell? And then, uh, Drew walks into a super kick by Jay, a spear by Jay heads up top. Uso splash 
Jay wins. He's going to lose to uh, Damian, Damian Priest, Priest Damian either Priest. on a Raw or, or at Backlash. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully they crazy. do this at a pay-per-view. Hopefully that title main events Backlash. I hope so. I hope so. We'll I hope so. Yeet. 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 All right. You want to answer some questions, Steve? Uh, yeah, we got a couple super chats here. First oh, yeah. up from uh, Redneck Samurai uh, with an LA Knight avatar. He says, is it possible Rock gave Cody a bead from Roman's Ula Fala necklace? Maybe. Possibly. Uh, Akon asks something similar. Says, here's something that do you think it could be a piece of the Ula Fala mm. because Cody took down the tribal chief and the Rock is heartbroken because of Roman's loss. Yeah, it could be. That, that could, could be. be. Do you think Cody would know what the piece of Ula Fala feels like? Yeah, like, I would think so. I would yeah, think so. I think so too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mickey G here says, uh, "Glad Cody ended his story. Can't buy, still can't buy him as champ." Interesting. 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 <laughs> Maggie's got a good point. She says, "If I'm Ava, I'd say I'm calling the board if I get screwed." Yeah. Good point. We're like, "Hey, can I speak to the director of the board?" Yes. That's my dad. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Yeet. Alex Foster here says, what would a Steve versus Larson pull apart brawl look like and what wrestlers would be involved? You wouldn't need wrestlers to break that apart. We just get tired and be like, ah, to hell with this. Gassed really easily. Quickly. I'd be like three point contest right now. Exactly. Be like, Fuck. At least do 21. <laughs> Got a chance there. Man, I'm going for, uh, I'm going for, I'm going for 14 today, man. All right. I want to see it. I want to see it. If you oh, get 14, get guess okay. what? You're huh. the three-point champion. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Anyways, uh, payday uh, yeah, questions. here says, how many title matches can Jay Uso lose before he's, he either wins or stops being main event Jay Uso? You know, if he main events in, at Backlash, he'll be still main event Jay Uso. He will be. As long as you main event matches. Sorry, my dog's crazy. I think she just had a bath. Oh, nice. I'm so excited. Uh, uh, Oliver or Olivier, all, uh, yeah, uh, Trotter uh, says, which championship reign will be longer, Damian Priest or Sami Zayn? Uh, oh, fuck. That's a good one. That's a really good one because I could see them both losing relative. I'm going to say. I'm going to say Priest. I feel like they need to build him more to be like a champion to like, you know, solidify that he's yeah. like the real deal. Go ahead. Go do your dog. Uh, next, next question. Cause that dog is doing something over there for him to be like, uh Oh, uh, let's see here. Dave Matuszek with the beginning of the Paul Levesque era. Uh, what other Vince, he says mannerisms, but I think he means like conventions should also go the way of the dodo. Um, unmotivated cameras. Uh, I like that Dom pushed camera guy away and he went running because that means like the camera is motivated. It made sense for it to be there. Yeah. But if there's yeah. like private conversations between people, why is there a camera guy just all up in their business? There shouldn't be that. Yeah. Oh, Doc Hensley. Great question. I know it's early, but with WrestleMania over, who do you see as a men and women's Royal Rumble winner? Women's going to be Bianca because they're going to do Bianca Rhea and Bianca's yeah. going to beat Rhea. You think uh, Phil win the men's rumble? Man, I don't know. I don't know. If, dude, honestly, like if his body holds up, the sky's the limit for old Phil. But I don't know. I don't know that it will. Gunther's a good shout. Yeah, Gunther would be great. Mm hmm. Uh, Josh Salazar says Tony Khan has said this year he'll be uh, uh, will be a big free agency year for AEW. Do the Tribal Chiefs, the Friendo Club, foresee a certain Brock Lesnar finding his way to AEW? I mean, uh, uh, Triple H answered a question about Brock at the media scrum and just said Brock's just at home being Brock. And I think he said he anticipates him maybe being back at some point or something like that. I know he said he's still with WWE. Yeah, but that kind of felt like more of a push, like. He can say that, and then they just don't use them if they yeah, want totally. to stay away from controversy totally. because of the lawsuit. Yeah. Uh, this is a good question. Uh, Zach Sparks says, Evil was spotted at a 7-Eleven in Philadelphia on Media Weekend. Which wrestler would you not want to run into at a gas station? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, 
uh, like, you know, may you rest in peace. Cut an amazing cameo on us, New Jack. I'm going to keep it in the House of Torture family. Okay. I'm going to say show because he always got that wrench with him. <laughs> oh, yeah. Never yeah. know when I'm like putting my gas and maybe he, he, I don't know, he gets bad vibes from me. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Blasted with the wrench. Yeah. I just wouldn't want New Jack to misinterpret anything I say as I want you to blade me. <laughs> <laughs> Like we're at a gas station, I'm loading up a glizzy, you know, with all sorts of good fixings on it. And yeah. then, uh, and he's on the other side of the glizzy station and I'm like, Hey, can you pass me that fork over there? And the next thing I know it's mass transit in the freaking gas station. Yeah, You're getting, you're getting the fork to your forehead. What a nightmare you. that would be. All uh, I wanted was a glizzy. Jesse Helsey is here. Says, uh, I really think this is some of the most enjoyable wrestling I've seen in some time. Where does this era rank so far? With you I mean, guys, in terms of in ring, the quality of the of in ring wrestling has never been better than it is right now, regardless of company. Yep, I feel like across the board, the level of talent is so high uh, that this is kind of, in my opinion, like this is prime wrestling era in terms of the in ring product for me, mm-hmm. without mm-hmm. a doubt. Mm-hmm. And I think we see a lot of instances of some of the best character work and storylines recently as well. You know, I think as the industry continue to evolve, it'll get away from, hey, let's just simply motivate two people wanting to have a fight into something a little more textured. Like we see with Drew McIntyre, like we've seen with Roman Reigns. It doesn't always have to be these long epic stories to see characters that are a bit more complex than, you know, guy who wrestles alligators, you know, and and people with depth and dimension and strength and weaknesses and flaws and to see how those strengths and weaknesses and flaws determine their paths to their career. Sorry. Were you putting slander on Skinner's name? Not intentionally. It just that's that so dude who wrestles alligators just popped in my head. <laughs> Didn't wasn't Skinner supposed yeah. to be Crocodile Dundee? He was the alligator wrestler, yeah. <laughs> uh let's see here. No, I agree with everything you said. Uh, the great Kramer says, uh, do you really think Tony Khan's going to show the uncut footage of what happened at all in? It's going to show something from all in, you know, man, I've got, I still have, here's my thing about it. I still have like this sense of like secondhand embarrassment. Like, Oh, really? They're going to say, it just seems like it's going to be awkward. It just feels like it's going to be awkward. I know, you know, I know and cringy, but if it's not hey, good for them. Uh, Cole Cruz here asks, what main of, main roster talents would you like to see to go to NXT for a run? Oh, Apollo Cruz, Bring back the time traveler there. gimmick. Bring back the prognosticator, the Nostradamus. Yeah. Uh, main roster talent, I don't know, man. Um, you know, they're doing a much better job of utilizing people, but... You know what I'm going to say? Hmm. Bronson Reed. Interesting. Matches with Dijak would be killer. Yeah. You know, big dude who could do cool shit. I feel like they'd, they'd like, there'd be more opportunities for Maximize him Maximize what he can do in NXT these days. I mean, yeah, yeah. Bronson versus Elba Femi. Great. That'd be awesome. Right. Bronson versus Josh Briggs. I'm just naming people that were in that one match. Well, that match was great. Uh, it was really match. I think this is uh, Decale. Sorry if you got the name wrong. It says, uh, it seemed like they're sprinkling seeds of the Judgment Day splitting up. Do you think that could still happen with the draft coming up where they keep them together? Judgment Day will stay a team in the draft. They're going to sure. be a team in the draft, and they have been sprinkling seeds of discontent for a very long Months. time now. Pretty much I'll, ever since Priest won Money in the Bank. I'll believe it when I At see least. it. Remster says, I was at Mania, and Taker's gong was the loudest pop I've ever heard live. What's the loudest pop you've ever experienced live? I think, Larson, we both know the answer to that. It's probably when Seth cashed in. At mm-hmm. WrestleMania 31. Although when the Hardys returned at Mania 30, that place was pretty loud. Oh, 33? Yeah. 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 I was still, I was miserable. So you I'm going to go so with miserable. 31, Seth. Yeah. Uh, uh, Kelmiko says, since I didn't start watching WWE until the Ruthless Aggression era, this is the most I've enjoyed The Rock. Do you guys think his run would have been as compelling last year if he faced Roman at 39? No, because he would have been babyface Rock. You know, I wonder, though, 
make because we had always speculated when Rock said Rock, Rock says, said that they couldn't get together creatively. Maybe he pitched because he claims that he called Tony Khan was like, "What if I come back Tony as the Khan, biggest?" Huh? <laughs> the other guy, those other guys, Nick Khan, and said, "What if I come back as the biggest bad guy?" Well, because you mean he tells that to Vince. Oh no, pal. Yeah, I gotta boot you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe you know we always assume that is that 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 phrase as in, oh, he didn't want to lose. They couldn't come together creatively, but maybe it's a situation where he had this idea for being a heel. And as you said, Vince is like, no, we're not doing that because Roman's the heel. Maybe it was a bit of both. You know, maybe. I'm going to come back maybe. and be a bad guy and I'm going to win the title. Yeah. Well, come out. Right. That could be. That could be. Steven Gibson says, with well, the draft coming up, do you see any tag teams being split up? Uh, I guess Alpha Academy, maybe. Maybe Gable will go to one brand and the rest of them will go to another. Huge. Uh, Scorpio85 with a super chat here asks, how long before Gunther is a world champion? Mm. Berlin? Mm. There's a lot going on with that world title. I know. I'm say 2025. Waiting too long. You know who might get split up? Dude! Imperium. <laughs> and, and we get back uh, Vinny Vici, the, yeah, the male model rich guy? I don't know what his gimmick was. Yeah, I don't know what the thing was either. Steve, uh, Andre Zimple here says, with T's Uncle Howdy coming back, would it make sense for Braun and Alexa Bliss to come back with him? I don't know what direction they're going to go with all this, but uh, sure. I think it'd be a great, yeah. I think they have such an emotional connection to Bray. All three sense. of them, yeah. they've got, they had such a bond. Bring back Eric Redbeard too, for that matter. Yeah. You know, though they, yeah. they have Bring such a bond. Rome. I think it'd be so good for them. It feels like it would be so good for them to honor their friend in that mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'd love to see that if they were all on board with it oh, emotionally, totally. it was something totally. they were interested in. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Mikey seven G says, what is the identity of the U S title? I've never really cared for it. Maybe because I'm Canadian. <laughs> What's the identity of the U.S. title? Well, it's the it's it's, it's the title of the United States. Well, like the Intercon United States, yeah. The Intercontinental is like work to, you know, supposed to be like workhorse title. U.S. title is. Oh, I don't know if it has that kind of identity. It's just not world title. Yeah, kind of less than. Yeah, one. How many continents there are? Seven. One seventh of the. Yeah. Of the Although title, the Intercontinental the title. title doesn't it just have. Like North America, Central America, and South America is not. I what think it's, it's to like represent? yeah, the Americas. Yeah, so I thought it was initially supposed to represent at least. I think so. Yeah, well, I have an Intercontinental title over here. I'll look at it. You do, yeah. See if there's a map on it with information. Well, he just keeps it there in his trash. Find out. Oh, this one has North America, South America, part of Europe, and Africa. <laughs> I thought there was one that just oh, whatever. <laughs> that was not helpful at all. <laughs> not gonna lie. No, it wasn't. Durr, half a okay, world. okay. Here, John Thon has the identity of the U.S. title. It's the Open Challenge title. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Ideally, that's what it is. Uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, I got, I'm out of questions. So. Okay. I got a you couple got, more if you, here. If you got a good one to to wrap us up, let's do it. Okay, so I got a push on this one, but I'll read it. Royal Kong says, with the draft coming up, who do you think needs a change of scenery? Who should say put? We're going to do a whole video on that. We are. We're gonna, we'll, do, we'll do that. We're going to do a mock draft. We've got a, a whole docket of programming around the draft. Michael Scalmanini has a movie question. What's our favorite film of the past 10 years? 10 years? Yeah, that's a tough well, It's come one. out since 2014. 2014. Eesh. Favorite movie of the last 10 years. I know there's an answer, but I never remember anything. Yeah, no, I remember when they come out. Um, duh. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. You put us on Ricky, the spot. It was, it's Ricky Snicky. <laughs> <laughs> Sound of freedom. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> oh, my gosh, oh, Steve. I feel like our friendos know that answer better than we do. Like, I know. What's our favorite movie of the last 10 years? Uh, let's see here. Hold on. Was there? There's no Star Trek movie come out in the last 10 years, I don't think. Or Star Trek Beyond might have, but I don't like that movie. 
Oh, oh, there you go. Uh, yeah, he's got Die Hard Homer. He just says Tarantino, but I'll go with Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Oh, yeah, you really like that one. I, I love that movie. That I haven't seen it yet. I'm going through a list here on IMDb. Of the... Oh, White Brown, it brings up the Batman. I, I'm a big fan yeah, of that Batman movie Yeah, the Batman was really well. good. It's a really good one. I think I like uh, Once Upon a Time better, though. Uh, I really love that movie. Parasite was really good. Okay, right, right, right. I right. like the Batman. Infinity War. That was one of my favorite movies the last 10 years. That that came in the last 10 years? Okay. Yeah, Infinity War. I think War it was like solid. 2019 or 2018. Um, uh, Top Gun Maverick was was fun. There you go. See, that's good. It's a fun movie. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what else. I don't really watch that much movies any, any movies anymore. I don't know why. Black Adam. <laughs> oh. Oh, Dude. everything, everywhere, all at once. Oh, there the you go. Incredible. That's a good one. Yeah, that's a good the movie's one. Incredible. <laughs> I'll say that one. Oppenheimer. <laughs> I love that I popped you yesterday during the stream, and he said, "Did Robert Downey Jr. deserve an Oscar?" And I said, "Who are his ops?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that's my new favorite term. All right, everybody, that's going to do it for the show today. We appreciate it. And here's the thing: we would go uh, twenty more minutes. But Hilton's right there, right there, wrapping us up. He's doing no, the wrap not, it up. He's not, he's he's not doing, doing this right no here. No cues. There's no Hilton. There's no wrap it up. It's all he's doing this right BS. here. This is BS. BS. Right here. Yeah. Anyway. BS. All right. Goodbye, We're everybody. wrapping it up right now. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye.